Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Uh, so welcome back, Wilms Front, uh, for the, the second consecutive week. I said uh, due by popular demand, not by viewers of this program, but also by followers of your uh, Facebook feed because they uh, especially uh, enjoyed or well, hearing hearing your uh, analysis and information in audio visual form rather than just as uh, statuses. Uh, they probably didn't yeah, care. <laughs> they probably didn't care too much about what what I said, uh, contributed to the conversation. They're just happy to see you. Well, sometimes sometimes it is about the interview, up, but um, no, look. Um, there were a few, quite a few new people who did reach out and message me and um, say, because <clears throat> they, had, they hadn't a lot of time. They hear a lot about the uh, the noises and all of that, but they don't really get a lot of the information and uh, the, 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 the real core stuff as to how the, the riots actually started in the US and how they were started off peacefully. So they found it very insightful. Well, we've got the, uh, I alluded to it uh, and summarized it uh, in my, my introduction. Thankfully, the, the worst of the violence uh, appears to be over in the, the United States, but all oh, the, the devastation and destruction, the, the buildings are still burnt to the ground. Uh, 20 people have been, and I think it's fair to say, murdered. Uh, they have been murdered in cold blood by these rioters and, and looters. They have a, arrested a, a suspect in uh, that uh, 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 that uh, retired uh, African American uh, St. Louis uh, police uh, chief. A 24-year-old man was arrested for murder over that. He was stealing a, a TV. Hope that uh, well, suspect rots in prison for that because that was just barbarous. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, <clears throat> the disproportionate um, level of outrage that we saw uh, with regards to the police officers that uh, got killed due to the rioting and the uh, and the looting, and that I mean, the, <clears throat> the, even the retired one uh, was was just terrific. And I mean, looking at the um, where this is going, the the overflow into uh, a lot of Europe. I mean, we've seen statues just being attacked everywhere, and uh, and we've seen you know right sixty thousand in Australia uh, protests, uh, mo pretty much mostly peaceful in Australia, um, but in London it's 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 hor it's it's pretty bad. It's it's very bad. I saw that uh, our, our mutual friend uh, Samrat uh, did some filming of the the, the Sydney uh, Black Lives Matter rally, which was allowed to go ahead at the, as the saying goes, at the eleventh hour after the uh, Supreme Court of Appeal in New South Wales overturned the uh, the ban on uh, the, the the march. Uh, I hadn't heard, uh, well, seen much of Samrat for the past uh, few months, which is so unlike him. He normally can't shut up or keep his face off uh, things. I also saw uh, one of your and Samrat's uh, friends, uh, Chris De Bruyne, he also did some some filming uh, there as well. Yeah, no, no, he's in the off season. I think I think that's what that's why he's been so quiet the last few months. Um, but, but no, more recently he's. Um, He's been uh, focusing on uh, just uh, just work a bit more, um, but with regards to uh, what, what's happening around Australia, I think a lot of people have been activated, uh, especially non-political as well, because they're being forced in a, into a corner, whether that's by virtue of them being white or uh, just people. Oh, frozen there for a moment, Joel. I'm sure he'll be back in a moment. A friend of mine, she uh, she's got almost four hundred thousand subscribers on. Are you just cutting it out there, about. Joel? Yeah, is that right? Just give, give me one second. I'll use this opportunity to put in the entropy link again. Uh, so, if you want to add to the add to the conversation. Is that good now, Tim? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was just cutting in and out. So we'll sit, sit back down and we'll see how we go. 
Sure. Mm. No, you you were cutting out too. Actually, it might be my it might be my connection. It is now, look, because it says excellent connection on my end. Okay. Mm. Now look, uh, I was just saying that uh, there seems to be a problem uh, with a lot of people being forced into these corners. And one one person on Instagram, she she's at four hundred thousand subscribers, and uh, look, uh, it it seems to me a lot of people have been pressuring her because she hasn't said anything on the Black Lives Matter movement yet. She's being forced into a position where she has to pick a side, because silence is violence, uh, Tim. If you didn't, hear. no silence and, is uh, consent, which I used to think it was the opposite. Yeah, uh, you see, affirmative <laughs> consent. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, they, they if you. It's violence if you do, if you say nothing, but if you say the wrong thing, if you don't say the uh, prescribed points that they want you to say, then it's also violence. So, uh, you know, what do you do in that case? It's it's become very much a religion, as they now call him Saint George, uh, George Floyd, who had passed away, sadly. Now you're um, of uh, Lebanese uh, ethnicity, and uh, to my knowledge, the Lebanese Australians—they're the the only uh, ethnic uh, group to be targeted in a modern race riot uh, in Australia. We all remember the Cronulla Beach riot of two thousand and live, where a guy went up to the camera and said "fuck the 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 lebs." So obviously, you're. Uh, ethnic community has been uh targeted uh in the in the past uh, so it's 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 not like um you're uh, you have you haven't experienced uh, prejudice in the past well uh, people in your community yeah it's it's uh it's kind of sad when um aboriginal the aboriginal community or perhaps leftists they they insinuate that they're the only underprivileged class or class that's experienced racism and look, it's not look. I don't believe in victim culture, so you don't hear me talking about this very often. I believe that you should pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and make do with the cards that you've been dealt, and play them as best you can. I believe that's the story of life. But there was uh, in the Coronella riots, there was indiscriminate targeting of uh, Middle Easterners, and uh, they even tar targeted Asians and. It didn't matter if it wasn't it wasn't a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew thing. It was an ethnicity thing, and that was that was that was a strange thing. Uh, how blind uh, the blind racism of it all. And look, the um, I was talking to a bunch of people in the weekend, relatives of mine, about about they're very concerned about what's happening with the Black Lives Matter movement and what's happening with progressivism. And they made the point that uh, they had to fight when they were younger. They had to fight when they were my age just to be you know acknowledged w wherever they went or just to have that respect because that people would always pick fights with them at the station you know on the way going home just wherever and it's 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 really it like that's part of what made them who they are and stronger people but it's not something that you hear them always flouting and touting it's not something that they they they, they don't ask for handouts because of it they just get on with it and they just build themselves up, build their family up, and then look look out for each other. You know, we don't have to like each other. We just have to live together in harmony. That's it. And that's not to diminish uh, 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 that type of uh, discrimination, but it's not healthy for the person uh, themselves to wallow in victimhood, uh, like use because we're going to be talking about popular culture uh, in, in a moment. But for example, uh, Fran Drescher, who was the creator and star of the the Nanny, one of the the funniest uh, sitcoms and, and funniest ladies of of all time. Uh, a lot of people don't know that she was uh, gang raped uh, during a home invasion in front of her husband in the 80s before she created this this show. That's a horrific event for well her uh, but also her husband at the time to to witness it but still didn't stop her being one of the funniest uh, women of all time and and even today she's this uh, uh eternal optimist yeah well they say humor is uh, born out of comedy um often i found the most boring people i've met are people who haven't really suffered at all mm. um in fact uh, joe, joe rogan's a great example of a great one of the greatest comedians in the world that's uh he had a very hot, tough uh, upbringing with his father and abusive father and look look at him look at him today you don't see him 
talking about, uh, you know, woe is me, uh, the upbringing I got. He got on with it, you know. He built himself up and he's got the most successful podcast in the world. He just signed a over $100 million deal with uh, Spotify and, uh, he, and YouTube is spewing. Now, the result of, because nobody got fined in Victoria, nobody got fined in New South Wales for breaching uh, social uh, distancing or limits on, on public gatherings. And now, uh, I know, well, in, in New South Wales, there's, there's finally new, a few vigilante uh, business operators saying, I'm just going to go for a full reopening, come and find me, shut me down, uh, I dare you, which is uh, to... Is how you that 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 type of uh, defiance and what I would say legitimate civil disobedience. Sometimes that needs to happen for uh, for change to happen. Uh, that's how we got uh, Easter Sunday uh, trading happening here in Victoria by a, a vigilante uh, hardware uh, operator. And I'm so sick <laughs> of politicians hiding behind the well it's it's not even the actual health advice they're just claiming it's the health advice like i think our chief health officers they've actually been quite level-headed and stayed out of politics but we're, we're just seeing endless stubbornness now even though the double standard has been on full display and there won't be a second wave from these rallies it's, it's it, it doesn't look like it's happening yeah, look, uh, I don't know. Are you saying that you don't think there'll be a second wave from the rallies? Yes. I don't know. I think that's yet to be seen. I mean, we know that there's a 14-day incubation period, to, and that's the maximum. So, I mean, we don't know yet. I think it's a bit bit soon to call it. I did do recall seeing someone say that they're going to do a, a march of our own uh, this weekend or the weekend after if there, if it turns out that there is no second wave. But... Um, but look, this could delay us a week, I heard, and it could cost us a billion dollars. Other yeah. reports have been saying it could cost us $25 billion if we get it, if we snag a second wave. And I wouldn't rule any of that out. And I'd caution any conspiracy theorists to, to rule that out because this is a genuine crisis. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't helping anyone shutting the economy down, um, except just the fact that we lose more of our rights and we waste uh, more good time that we could be using recovering. But look, I think I think the problem with these marches and the problem with what it's done to our trust in the authorities is we all got along just fine with the lockdown. We were all we all agreed. We, we came to an agreement that well, this is what's um, necessary. That was uh, I, I would say the the narrative at the at the time i i wouldn't uh, let's it, let's uh, assume let's assume we all we were giving the most charitable uh, there was no poll that was taken but we all went along with it we accepted okay some of us got to work from home and they can and the narrative that they set they went against so you can be damn well sure we're going to hold them to that narrative because there the amount of suicides that have gone up because of this the amount of people that couldn't get the cancer research they needed or the cancer checkups they needed how many the leading the leading deaths in australia are from heart surgery and just you know heart failure now how many people weren't able to detect that yeah, exactly. that they've got that problem and how many people with all of the other diseases now i would have thought that that would be one of the biggest problems we need to look into and be careful with but we're exacerbating it and you know what on top of that, Tim, if you don't mind me throwing it in, things are so bad that we're actually not on top of our Ebola and so Ebola could be coming back as well in places like the United States. But this is this goes back to the problem, Tim, with um, our, our, our breakdown of trust in the authorities. If they're not going to hold a consistent standard, we just put them there a year ago, just a year ago. You know, we barely crossed the threshold. The, the, the people's trust, I can see why a lot of them are opening up in protest because... It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that, that they can't come into a business now and say, you know, close down. You can't you can't be open with this many people. They have no authority on this. I mean, I was at a house on on Sunday and I was having a lovely dinner with a the family. There was maybe, uh, you know, if there was a few people over what we probably should have. Now, if a police officer or if Gladys Berejiklian herself walked in, we would not have had a bar of it. Not at all. 
because they've completely lost their authority to talk on this completely there is no reason if there's one death from from the marches that happened on the weekend someone there's got to be some heads rolling i mean tim you saw it there were people there were there were politicians marching in some of these marches mm. and some of them i think one of the green senators today refused to get a COVID 19 test done was that uh, so that she can protect green senator marine faruqi or my green senator janet rice one of uh, one of them i'm not sure i think it was the one with glasses uh that's um, janet right oh they both had glasses was it light or dark skin oh jeez, light light then it's janet rice there you go look <laughs> janet rice uh she's refused to take uh, a COVID 19 test for the sake of her peers that was one of their reasons for how, us how, how to does clamp that work? down. How does that work? It, she's just like, I was social distancing. I was this, I was that. I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's a double standard that she's, she's standing from her ivory tower saying, you people below me, you're not worth my time. And I, I don't need to do any of this. I'm, I should be, I should be judged by a different standard. And Tim, something's going to break, man. If, if, you know, I've seen a few people articulate this, but I don't think it's going to be enough. People need to let out some anger. And look, I'll tell you now, Tim, if there is a march, if there is a protest of 60,000 people that was approved, wait till they see a, pr a protest in the tens of thousands of business owners, of families, of people who really are the backbone of this country, not people that are on the dole all the time. Now, I'm not ruling out all 60,000 people in that march as people who are on the dole, not at all. But my point is there have been tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people laid off. What do we have? Four million people laid off. How many people want to get back to work who lost their job because they abided by the rules, the narrative that was set down? And now they're in a situation where they've just been, they've, they've been spat in the face. It's ridiculous. I don't even want to know how many people committed suicide over this last time because I need to keep it together because some people need a voice. Some people need to be heard. And I think that's what you're doing, Tim. And I think it's really great by, by giving people like me a platform and by you yourself, you know, elaborating on the concerns of these very people. I just want to address a comment uh, in the live chat from Anx Anxious Aussie who said, Tim cheered on one protest, uh, i.e. the, the anti-lockdown protest he can't condemn the blm protest for happening on on those grounds well anxious aussie i know as a regular viewer of the uh, of this show would know that my view was that as soon as the the curve uh, was flat which was the deal uh, all the restrictions should have been lifted by international travel and the uh, the the reason why i'm critical of this protest first of all is because uh, all I, I would say the overwhelming majority of those attending were the, the lockdown lovies who were like, yay, this, uh, uh, we're all in this together. We're saving lives by, by staying home and watching uh, Netflix. And now this far leftist mob, they get to uh, decide uh, that uh, the, the pandemic and uh, coronavirus restrictions uh, are lifted. It's, it shows that they're the mob uh, that are in charge. So it's about the the double standards and the the hypocrisy and uh, equ uh, equality, the the law applying equally. I agree. I don't want these coronavirus restrictions in place. But how can you drag off the off the the, the like shut down a, a a Mother's Day anti lockdown protest? Drag them off the the stage. Uh, that's no way would they do that at the black lives matter rallies no not at all not at all and i agree with you tim i believe that one of the most important rights we've got is the right to protest the right to, to gather and rally but that's i think yeah as you said it comes back to the double stand people won't stand for it i mean i saw an article today about benji marshall accidentally kissing oh, yes. a, a, a reporter which, which which well there you go which was a breach of nrl rules no one wants to hear this crap. No, one, you just approve sixty thousand people marching around the capital cities of Australia. People don't want to hear that. Are you serious? Mm. It's ridiculous. Mm. 
Well, as I said to you at the end of uh, uh, of last week's show, like um, I'm looking forward to to seeing you and and other and rest of my Sydney friends. And I won't give you a kiss, but I'll, I'll definitely sh- 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 shake your hand and and give <clears> you <throat> give you a hug because, as I said, uh, like criminalizing uh, like human contact and in intimacy, like they are over in the UK, that is completely uh outrageous though the uk is even yeah. in a more bizarre situation <laughs> where well the mob is even uh bigger uh not only are they breaching uh, lo- uh lockdown but uh committing uh public vandalism which it was it was the 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 statue in in bristol uh of uh oh, i'll get these names back up back up again a, a Edward uh, Colston, and it was the statue of Robert Milligan uh, that was taken down by the authorities, and mm. the, the the statue of uh, Winston Churchill uh, was uh, vandalised with the word uh, "racist" written on it. And you 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 made this uh, point uh, that. Uh, 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 that Churchill fought the fascists. He was, you would say, the world's most famous anti-fascist. Yes, uh, he he was he was probably the 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 the, the main uh, I, I would say advocate of keeping the the British Empire together and colonial rule over over India. Uh, but are you saying that uh, the alternative uh, Hitler and uh, his views on race and and in Mussolini or and all of the other axes that they were better? <laughs> exactly. I mean, he, he beat <laughs> he beat the fascists. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it's actually ridiculous. And even Americans are, are shocked by the fact that that happened. But um. But look, Tim, coming back to the uh, statue that was knocked over in Bristol of uh, Edward uh, Colston, that um, that's there are about thirteen percent of people in a YouGov in a, in, the, in the UK uh, YouGov poll that said, yeah, thirteen percent agree that they should have they they they, they sh- it was right to appro- to remove that statue the way that they did. And for those of you that don't know, they got they were prepared. They got grappling hooks. Once the police got out of the way police were there they, they weren't a lot of people don't see them in the footage they were there they're on the side they pulled it down with grappling hooks they rolled the thing it took them ages because they're very weak they rolled it and then they rolled it into the river there the ri- river times and it was it was just it was just completely anti-democratic and I, t- I don't i don't say that because i mean that i didn't like it this guy was a horrific guy if you know anything about his history you know he was a bad guy but it was anti-democratic and here's some stats to prove it as i said 13 percent of people in the yougov poll agreed with it the, it happened the way it happened so that's puny there were 40 percent of people who approved of the statue being removed but they disagreed with the way it was done and that's very important it's very important because because one way it respects uh democracy the other way spits in the eye of democracy it's very important to understand which is which. And then also 33% disapproved of the statue being removed at all, which is quite a large portion. And then 14% didn't know. Now, Tim, on the, on, the, on the topic of statues, I think we might be in alignment on this. I don't think we should remove any statues, to be completely honest with you. Now, if it's something like, you know, in the close of World War II, there was never a, mor- a, remor- a, uh, sorry, a memorial to Hitler, there was no, no one knows where he was buried. They say he, they dumped his body into the sea. Um, now look, I understand why they did that. They didn't want anyone, it, it was such a dangerous ideology that that was just wiped out. They wanted to make sure they got rid of it. But these ideologies of slavery, they, they've been gone for decades, for, for centuries. And it's a very important part of history to remember the the people of old who really screwed up yeah. so that we don't repeat history them, is un, unpleasant uh, even uh, the a, a lot of historical figures they've done some very good things but also some very bad things as well and you can say you can say that fairly about uh winston churchill uh for uh example uh, but that's history and yeah uh, 
the thing about also statues as well, like for example, Edward Colston, I had no idea who he was until they tore down the, 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 the statue, which means that the statue itself, I would say if you saw that statue, like you would, you, you would learn things, but uh, well, unpleasant things, shocking things, but they happened. Exactly. And I mean, this is the funny thing. Censorship doesn't usually work. Uh, if anything, you've just enraged the very alt-right people and you've made them more popular by sh shining the spotlight on them. I never heard of, of Edward Colston until they knocked the statue down. And I probably never would have heard it because I don't like, I don't want to go to England. I don't want to see, you know, that back part of Bristol. You know, it, it, it's just, it's just funny because they do, they do the same thing online by censoring people. They have the Barbara Streisand effect. Now, look, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of statues in Australia too. And, you know, there are some people with like the Captain Cook statues. They'd probably want to vandalize those as well. Well, it has been and vandalized. Uh, I in think past, it was yeah. in uh, yeah, 20, 20, 2018, your statue. Uh, I, I think it was, what is, what's it called? Uh, pink, uh, pink washed. It got pink paint uh, thrown on it. Yeah. And look, this is very dangerous stuff. And I'm not, it's not because <sighs> what's dangerous is the anti-democratic nature of it. I don't, per, my personal view, this is, this is my personal view. You shouldn't review the statues because it's a vital part of history, because if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Hmm. Now, if, if the majority of Australia says, you know what, let's hold a, you know, referendum. I don't think it's worth it. Let's hold a referendum on this. And the majority of Australia said, let's remove all statues about Captain Cook, I'd accept it. It's democratic. Okay, whatever. No worries. But what we're risking here, 13% of the UK wanted to remove the statue in the way that it, it was removed. The rest of the UK didn't want it removed anti-democratically like that. That's over, that's over 85% that didn't want it removed that way. So what you've done is basically you've pitted the rest of the country against you. You're, you're not building up Black Lives Matter, however it relates. And on top of that, you're going to risk a response from the alt-right. And look what, what's happened. I can't say his name, but I was watching a video from this guy. And he, he's, 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 been an, he's, he's constantly shined a light on uh, the grooming gangs in the UK. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Just check my Facebook page. And he has been saying, if you're, if you're a patriot, if you love this country... You better be there this weekend to defend these statues and stand around them. There will be thousands of people there, Tim, from his call. There will be thousands of people. And th that's when the real race stuff actually starts. Nigel Farage has warned about this, and so has Majid Nawaz. They've got to watch out. They really do, because this can get really bad. The UK is further down the deterioration uh, compared to the US and Australia. They're well, they're well ahead of Australia, and they're a little bit ahead of the US. Now, that's, that's going to be really dangerous. Now, in Australia, we haven't quite got there yet. I mean, we, we barely saw any violence in the protests, and that, that's good, because, you know, when you see people jumping on cars, I remember I saw this one video of a guy jumping on a car, he's trying to be violent. And even the protesters were looking at him like, what are you doing? It's, <laughs> it's Australia, you know, <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> you know, Australia was the first place they outruled, uh, as, as it was the first colony in the British Empire that they outruled from the start slavery. Yeah. It, it, doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense why, <laughs> why you know, you, these protests are here. I mean, we can go into the Aboriginal stats, but I, I, I'd, I'd recommend everyone just listen to Jacinta just, 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 just Price. Uh, she's very good on this. Uh, she's been uh, she ha she hasn't held back in uh, scolding uh, these uh, narcissistic uh, protesters. Uh, she's been on a on a publicity uh, blitz. Uh, was on uh, yeah. Carnage House Productions just a couple of yeah. couple of days ago. She's she's never uh, minced minced words and. Uh, of course, because she she goes against uh, what we call at the unshackled the Aboriginal superstructure, uh, she's targeted uh, online for abuse and harassment and racist abuse as well. People on social media, leftists, have called her the N word, uh, photoshopped her with uh, Klansmen, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, photoshopped her drinking from coconuts. Yeah, 
yeah, they call it the coconut as well. Mm. It's um, it's really sad. And you know, I called this a, a long time ago, the Blexit situation. I don't, I don't want to go into it too much for you, Tim. I do believe we touched on it a bit last mm. last time. But there's a Blexit movement in America. What the hell is that? I'll tell you. It's the black people in America. They are leaving the Democratic Party over there. They're, they're the more progressive party there. And they're leaving because they've done nothing for them. Democrat cities, you know, have been in control for 50 years, some of them. And they've done not a damn thing. In fact, they've done a lot worse. You know, Donald Trump, he's done more than Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Joe Biden combined in the in affecting the black community because they've actually hurt the black community. Trump's helped them. Now, Candace Owens is someone in America who's leading the Blexit movement. In fact, she dubbed the name. And in Australia, I made this I made this uh, comment in September last year. I said, okay, that's America. What's going on in Australia? Well, I, saw, I ran into this Jacinta Price uh, interview with John Anderson. And I was like, that's my girl. She's saying the same things that Candace Owens is saying. These, com these communities have been given billions of dollars over the years, billions. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal to see where it's gotten them, nowhere. And this, this has to change yeah. because if, 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 if throwing money at the problem isn't going to fix the problem, then we've got to work out what it is. And she narrows it down to stuff like the fatherlessness, right, which is like the strongest predictor of imprisonment and, yeah, which and uh, being homeless. You don't homeless. even need to break down by race. It's, it's, and this is the same with the, uh, uh, those who are incarcerated in the, the United States. It's more to do with uh, poverty, father, fatherlessness, period. You, you can just look at the situation colorblind and see what is the, the cause absolutely and you know what it's it's funny because if if i was uh you know if we take a different statistic and we take race out of it for example we say 90 percent of men in prison uh, of people in prison are men then i don't i don't use that to batch women i don't say that i want a 50 50 percent you know threshold and uh represent re representation in prison i say guys we've got to get our, our crap together we need to really you know, improve this. This is this is ridiculous. It's nothing against women. It's about bettering ourselves and and working out the root causes of these things. And I think that's what makes society a better place by looking inwardly rather than uh, someone to blame. Yeah, I no I noticed that in the the United States, well, uh, they've got the what is it, defund and uh, dismantle police departments. But now the 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 reparations for slavery uh, discussion is is back. Of course, the Australian. Uh, ver a version of this is is pay the rent. Uh, I published an article at the beginning of the year. If you look at the, well, you just mentioned the expenditure. Uh, we've we've paid the rent and then some more. It's ridiculous. I can say I'm Aboriginal right now, and you no one can question it. In fact, I can sue you if you question me mm. that I'm Aboriginal. Yeah, and that's it. Are you um, are you actually Lebanese? Because you're one of the the more white uh lebanese uh men i've seen people say that you look like well uh that you're a lookalike for for peewee herman and he was very white <laughs> lebanese come in all shapes and sizes um they're, they're you can take me part before of the world. human rights commission now <laughs> exactly i can no, i'm actually 97 percent uh syrian and lebanese but um i was actually looking at my 23 and me uh, the other night um, but it's very fascinating how it breaks it down. But no, in, in terms of the actual, um, the, the handouts, you could, you could honestly make the case that we've paid the rent, honestly, and it's done nothing. And we should probably stop paying the rent. Maybe then all the, all, because this is, this is the thing. The reason why there are so many sick people that haven't helped black people in America that claimed that they would is the same reason we've got that in Australia. Why does a robber rob a bank? It's because that's where the money is. Now, the, the problem we've got here is we've thrown so much money at these problems. There's, as Jacinta Price says, there's this massive Aboriginal bureaucracy that's formed, whether it be Aboriginal people who say they're advocating for other Aboriginal people, or if, if it's just other people uh, are part of these bureaucracies. And it has to stop. We need better ways of solving these problems. 
not every problem can be solved by throwing money at it. You know, another grant, another, you know, there's an example of this is, you know, you can, you can throw as many grants and university openings to Aboriginal students as you want, but if they don't actually use it, maybe they'll drop out because they struggle. They found that out the hard way in America. They passed affirmative action and they found that kids getting into the higher universities just because they were black over a Chinese student who did exceptionally well, those black students never ended up continuing their course. So who ended up winning from that? No one. But it made everyone feel good in the short term when they passed it. And that's the same problem we're having with a lot of the solutions that are being put forward to the Aboriginal community. And it's really sad. Well, on the statues, we didn't even get to, to Cecil Rhodes, uh, the, the Oxford uh, University students demanding his statue get uh, taken down and they, they, they want Oxford to, well, compensate the people of colour for having his uh, statue. And don't forget there's the, the Rhodes uh, 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 scholarships as well, which uh, Tony Abbott was a Rhodes uh, scholar, uh, Angus Taylor's uh, a Rhodes scholar. I mentioned that Rachel Maddow uh, is a, is a, a, a Rhodes scholar. They, they, they want Oxford to, to make up by uh, admitting uh, more, pe more, pe more uh, yeah. students of, of colour. But Ce uh, Ce uh, Cecil Rhodes, well, he had a whole nation named after him, Rhodesia, uh, which uh, took up uh, a lot of what is now modern, modern Zimbabwe. And they, they, they mainly, well, because he, he was a colonizer of Africa and, and like, he, he made derogatory comments about their intelligence and that, but he was not, uh, he, he, he was not a, a bad man for his times. And this is what we're talking about. He, uh, uh, history, hi history is is complex, and he he did overall make a a positive contribution to Britain. Well, I don't know much about Rhodes, but I know this as a general concept. You got to be very careful how you pass judgment on past generations by using your own standard in modern days, because eventually, the people in the future are going to do that to you. And they're going to look at how you judge the people before you. So just that, that kind of leaves you. I think I've heard uh, uh, Douglas Murray make this point really well. What are the things we're doing now that people in the future are going to just be wondering, why did you do that? Mm. Transgender surgeries, putting kids on puberty blockers, abortion. The science is proven on that. It's settled. That's why no one wants to have the biological debate. You know, or the, I'm sure there's a number of topics where we're going to look at these in the future when we truly progress on these issues. And we're going to realize that we're going to be judged on the positions we held. So maybe it's a good idea if we're just a little bit gracious in the manner that we handle these discussions and understand the contextual uh, influences on these people. I mean, it's a very dangerous road to start going down yeah. with these things. Otherwise, very soon you'll find the mob coming after you. I mean, point to someone. I, I made this point today. Point me to someone who can reel in the progressive left now. Because I'll tell you, there's no one left. Well, uh, we haven't even got to, and we we won't uh, get to to, to John, Thomas Jefferson, the author of the the <laughs> Declaration of Independence. Independence. Uh, we we will. Uh, I think everybody is aware of their, their their history of of that. We'll just let it speak for itself. But we're talking about those who fail to learn from history are doomed to uh, repeat it. And we're talking about Nazi Germany before one of their 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 or their their most uh, I, 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 the, the, one of the most uh, iconic image images uh, from early in the the nazi regime was the the book burning of uh, unapproved uh, degenerate uh, uh, texts and well we're seeing that today in in digital form because in response to the death of, of george floyd uh, the the bbc and netflix announced that they were uh, pu uh, pulling uh, the or oh, i guess you call it uh, black 
comedy sketch series Little Britain uh, from uh, 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 from their their applications it was a it was a it was a popular show in the in the 2000s i uh watched it it was uh hilarious it's it's still hilarious and also notice it's been pulled from stan in australia our streaming service and also you can't buy the dvds from uh jb hi-fi so it's it's like it, it's it's been a coordinated uh, de-platforming. I've still got the DVDs uh, at home, uh, so I hope I'm not uh, raided for having um, uh, un uh, yeah, uh, unapproved comedy because uh, the uh, the two actors in it, uh, Matt Lucas and uh, David Williams, they did dress up in blackface, yellowface, made lots of politically incorrect, uh, racially charged, uh, sexually charged uh, jokes and. And all kind of, well, the, the, the main offensive one was uh, uh, David Williams' uh, uh, character, this big fat black woman, uh, Desiree Devere, who was uh, uh, the, the new wife of Roman Devere, uh, who, uh, who uh, had this uh, rivalry with uh, Roman's ex-wife, Bubbles Devere, who was another, uh, well, she was a white fat lady and the, the joke was they were two really uh big fat lady and the uh, big fat ladies and their clothes would constantly fall off and <laughs> it was just like a gross out uh, uh thing there and then there was also uh matt lucas played this uh thai lady boy bride who uh who scammed uh, this british guy uh mr 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 dudwee as she as she uh, called him which is what well, yellow face is is as offensive as as blackface these days <laughs> and we saw hbo uh take take off uh its streaming service gone with the wind uh, because of the 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 black maid and we've seen paramount tv owned by uh, cbs vicom cancel cops uh the reality tv show does that mean channel seven is going to cancer uh the reality tv show uh border uh security uh what about sea patrol no wait that's the that's a fictional show that's not a reality show <laughs> if people get my reference they should <laughs> but you get my it's point pretty... Yeah, I get your point. I mean, it seems like the purge is in full swing. And uh, this was always going to happen. History doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And uh, look, if I may just allude to this in the past, uh, the words of um, Peter Hitchens. Well, I mean, what, what kind of man are you going to be or woman? Uh, are you going to be someone who runs with the crowd or are you going to be someone like Peter Hitchens uh, who says, I will not run with crowds. I refuse to. And uh, I mean, him in Rhodes, when he was in Rhodes and everyone was kneeling before, you know, the black people there, they, he, there's a photo of him just standing up like there was no one around him standing up. He was the only one that refused to bow and kneel. Like, will you be like that? And uh, I guess that's my question to people on this censorship stuff, because, you know, corporations are very... Corporations don't have very strong backbones when it comes to their profits and their public perception. They'll very quickly bend the knee to these sort of, uh, you know, scare tactics. Um, well, literally tactics. bending the knee now, as we've seen. Yeah. That's the new yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Or taking yeah, the knee. Yeah, yeah. I call it bending the taking knee. Taking the knee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it's not, it's not good. It's not good at all because... Look, we're, we're, we're going into this, you know, pseudo-religious, you know, environment where, I mean, the washing of feet, you know, bowing, uh, you know, saying things together, like the same way that I'd say the Our Father prayer in front of my church, uh, the way that's being said with other people, people are doing similar things, the way they're calling George Floyd St. George, you know, the revered. I mean, this is, this is insane and it's happening right in front of people and they're just, you know, going along with it. Most people will do it. What, what is going on, Tim? I mean, you're, you're, uh, you consider yourself an atheist. What, what, what do you make of all this? Uh, it's, it, it is a cult 
cult-like and there's a lot of uh, cowards and uh, appeasers, which it, it never works. Uh, the old expression, uh, my optics, I, 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 I've, there's often been the expression, go woke, go broke. We've now seen it, uh, go woke, uh, get looted. And we're seeing uh, some corporations like uh, uh, Amazon, and uh, Bank of America, and even Chick Fil A now going woke up, and you just sort of think it's like it's like if a uh, you cause a fire with gasoline, you try to put it out with gasoline. <laughs> it's pretty insane. I uh, I don't know where this is going. I I, I just think it's bad. Mm. It's very bad. And I love my black humor or dark humor, whatever uh, you, you want to call it. Like some of the most tasteless, insensitive jokes I laugh hysterically at because, well, that's how in the old days, that's how people got, got through uh, tough, tough times by uh, the, the humor got them through the, the misery and uh, some of the, like the, the, the devastation and probably the or well, the, the the comedy show uh, that is the the favorite uh, of people in my chat and also myself is is fat pizza I'm not sure if uh, if you're uh, a fan uh, yeah, yeah. it's it, it's uh, it's been an iconic show of the past 20 years as has uh, Polly Phoenix uh, other show houses because it just took the piss out of everybody equally like uh, whether it be you know, uh, uh, ethnics lebs uh, asians africans bogans it's it, that, that's what made it so, uh, so so great and i'm glad that fat pizza was able to return on seven mate last year it was the highest rated uh, show that had ever been on the channel is going to be back this year and and paulie fennick has got how's those uh lockdown and like they do, like you know, uh, it, like it, the, the whole idea of the show is to create this like cartoony, ca cartoony uh, 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 stereotypes, and that's what makes it funny. Like they have a go at like uh, you know conservatives like uh, John Howard and Tony Abbott, but because they have a go at all of them, like that's why you that's why you laugh at it. You can you can laugh at like people people on 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 your own side and Paulie Phoenix going to be in Sky News have got a special the death of the Aussie larrikin which is going to basically be uh uh lamenting but we don't want to lose that humor here yeah it's hilarious i um i love uh, fat pizza it's, you know humor is the best way to get over racism and i think was, that's really helped a lot of people um and i think that uh <laughs> I think that it's only a matter of time before fat pizza gets ruled out as not woke enough. No, never. It, they'll they'll triple wire. You watch, mark my words, Tim. If we, if we still wire. had dames and dames and knights, he should be Sir Polyphenic. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, it's it's either one, it's one, either one thing or the other. They either become just not funny, and then the, the show gets cancelled eventually after you know. Just, runs out of steam or you know they just trip a wire and they have to apologize and readjust and then they have to become unfunny anyway it's only a matter of time Tim. it's just you know this is just the pattern i've seen around the world you know yeah. people this is why people don't visit this is why comedians don't visit college campuses they used to do that in the us all the time well, Fat, uh, Fat Pizza, uh, the the back in business series last year, uh, that did not go uh, down that path, thankfully. In fact, it, it went further. It introduced the the African gangs into to Hashfield, which has become uh, even 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 more. Uh, you you would say uh, multicultural, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was just hilarious. And they have what is it, Shazza and Dazza? They're the only two. Uh, to Aussies left in left in Hashfield. <laughs> That's <was> great. <laughs> but uh, uh, going back to the the Little Britain uh, creators, Matt Lucas and and David Williams. Well, Matt Lucas, he's basically apologized for the initial series saying oh we wouldn't do that now and i know how people find it offensive now i noticed on his twitter feed he hasn't 
he hasn't uh, uh, commented on the 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 the, the burning of uh, his uh, comedic masterpiece. Oh, we haven't even got to the fact that what is that? It, I, I wasn't even going to comment on it, but it's just a it's another example of uh, the the SJWs eating each other. Uh, J.K. Rowling being demonized as a as a, a as a turf, which she's not a turf. She's just she 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 accepts trans people, but she still believes that there's two biological genders, which is there's still two perfectly reasonable positions to have. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, I don't see I don't see what the big deal is. Um, it, it is it was kind of funny to watch uh, the Harry Potter actor go after her. I have to admit. I mean, he Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. He'd, he'd still be no one. He's, he'll always be known as Harry Potter, you know. Uh, I don't even. I, don't, I didn't know his, his name was Daniel Radcliffe, and <laughs> um, and that's the, that's the funny thing. The person that made him famous is is going after yeah. someone who someone who's richer than the Queen herself, and um, it's funny. It's funny because it's like this is, you know, she cultivated this for years. She cultivated. She she blew flames. Uh, into this progressive sort of aura, and she created this monster. Not even she can reel it back in. And it goes back to my point. No one can reel in the left anymore. They're just a, an angry mob, angry at the world, and they want revenge. Uh, don't forget that uh, Hermione uh, Emma Watson, she's been a long-time feminist, got to speak at the, uh, the, the United Nations, just like uh, uh, Greta, and now I noticed Emma Watson has her head shaved, uh, now, I'm not sure if it's uh, because apparently that's a way to get rid of your white privilege if you're a woman, shave your head. <laughs> yeah, it seems that way. It's a, it's a great way to not get a boyfriend. I mean, I don't... I don't uh, she said she's self-partnered, Emma Watson, so she has a partner, it's herself. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Self-love. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I wish her, I, yeah. I, so wish her the, I wish her the best of luck. Yeah, maybe the uh, the retort from oh, you know incel should be I'm not an incel I'm just uh, self partnered and I practice self pleasure. You can cut both ways, Tim, can't it? <laughs> yeah, that's an example yeah. of my own uh, black humour. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, we might finish off by I think uh, uh, well, it's it's. And it's not relevant to anything that we discussed, but I think it's worth us uh, highlighting it to, to name and shame uh, this uh, uh, disgusting person. Did you hear about this Greens candidate who or ran uh, in the electorate yes. of Cook against uh, Prime Minister in 2019 charged with child sex offenders? So, uh, uh, Jonathan Doig... AFP searched his home in Guyma Bay in Sydney uh, South. Uh, uh, for the past uh, 10 years, uh, he had uh, been paying for uh, child sexual abuse to be carried out uh, in, the, mm. in the Philippines. He'd sent a total of $129,000 to 97, shouldn't say beneficiaries, exploiters, uh, pedof uh, pedophile facilitators. His Greens membership has been uh, suspended. Oh, that's uh, he was a uh, software engineer at the University of, of New South Wales. Uh, two of the crimes he is accused of car uh, carry maximum penalties of fifteen years in jail. That's a maximum penalty for those horrific, or oh, you'd say evil uh, things here. And he's. Uh, it hasn't got it on this ABC story, uh, but uh, in the Australian story, which is paywall, they were the ones who broke the story initially. Uh, mm. He had a photograph with um, Marine Faruqi and Richard uh, Di Natale. And it's just like, uh, uh, this story highlights it to me there. It was chilling that this man, because he'd been a perennial Greens candidate at the federal and state level, that he was preaching social justice, compassion, and I assume care for children during that time when he was uh, paying for and helping facilitate uh, the most despicable, uh, some of the most despicable acts of uh, pedophilia and, and child uh, abuse in the world. 
Yeah. And I hear crickets from feminists. Crickets. Mm. Where is everyone? Where's all the outrage? You know, this guy, he, you know, it makes you consider the death sentence. I'll be honest. It really does. Mm. Cause uh, it, it's, I watched a, what was it? A, it was a news documentary once about uh, trying to, well, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it, 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 it's basically um, one of the most difficult uh, battles that well, international authorities uh, are fighting, these child exploitation rings in the Philippines, where it's basically Western men paying uh, these poor Filipino parents for their children to be abused. And they interviewed one of these girls who was on camera and like she was in tears about what 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 happened to her it's i it's just reminded me of that and like the like you hear about the like uh, uh you know this this happening and like just reminded me of when i heard that like you know they interviewed this girl and like she's what is it 10 years old and she's she's crying like crying because of like you know what these evil or you'd say western exploiters have done 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 to her <laughs> death sentence mate that's why i uh, i say it makes you consider it it's yeah. um it's a, it's certainly it's certainly something that is reprehensible and look I've, I've i've been ragging a lot these last few weeks i've been giving the uh conspiracy theorists a plug for the longest time and a lot of the conspiracy theories these last these last few months i've most of them have been actually incorrect some of them have actually been right now there is an interesting theory that I haven't really looked into much that on on pedophilia at the center of our governments and uh, you know the, the, be these big cover-ups of these same sort of people that the, the Australian federal, federal um, police have just you know accused this man of this green former Greens candidate now there might be something there Tim and if there is there's going to be some pain to bear the people need to know what's going on because if this guy is doing this to people that are way less well off than him you know it's reprehensible to anyone but it's especially bad to someone in the developing world i mean mm. it's really sad it's really sad i mean this yeah. poor child you know th there's there's very strong evidence to suggest that people become you know uh, just suicidal uh, definitely but also gay because of uh experiences they've had you know everyone's heard stories you know whether it be a priest or whether it be uh you know just someone just someone anyone these poor kids you know you're probably giving them a death sentence just by one night with them you know it, these things they last you know it's very sad because anyone anyone that's got a daughter or a sister or a, you know it, it's very sad and we we're talking about uh, colonialism before. What uh, these Western pedophile uh, rings are uh, creating in the Philippines, that is a form of evil colonialism, basically using uh, this, uh, 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 this developing country for well, the, uh, the gratification of these sick people back home. And definitely, I think that not just in the Philippines, but also Thailand and, and Vietnam, where there's a lot of child sex tourism. It's something where I definitely think Australia needs to do better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we should totally be leading in that. And, uh, you know, there's a good way we could spend our money. <laughs> stop giving it, stop giving so much of it ineffectively to Aboriginals and give it effectively to somewhere where it could really improve things. I mean, a great way to... <clears throat> I think I heard Jacinta Price say this. We need to look at where we're spending our, our dollars in this country. One example would be the Aboriginal handouts we do. We need to see what works. We need to see what doesn't work. And I, I'm sure everyone agrees you don't want to be spending money on stuff that doesn't work if it's proven that it doesn't work. And then we can focus on things that we do need to do. Stuff like that. Stuff like cracking down on these child sex rings. You know, stuff like just getting, you know, there's, there's a million things you could think of that we could do with this money, that everyone agrees that you don't want to spend unnecessary money. Let's get on with it. 
Yeah, governments are good at spending money, but not spending it uh, wisely. They love to announce uh, that uh, we're investing this, but uh, it's hardly ever scrutinized the end result. It's easy to spend money that's not your own. Mm. Remember, people, it's your money. <laughs> it's your money. Mm. If you're getting a handout, you're probably going to have to pay it back in the next few years anyway. So don't be too keen. Well, it's been good to have you uh, back on for a second week uh, week in a row, uh, uh, Joel. Uh, if, if the demand keeps keeps coming, <laughs> will you keep coming back? Well, absolutely, no, mm. absolutely. I, you, you know, I love uh, these shows, Tom, Tim. So, uh, and I do uh, with uh, all of the the Wilmsrant uh, features and segments. Uh, re well upload them separately to the the main uh unshackled channel uh, so i uploaded last week's uh our, our chat in a separate uh joel uh, <laughs> uh joel feature so i'll do the same uh with this as well awesome i'll give it a, i'll give it, give it a share tim but uh, if anyone wants to follow me follow me on facebook uh that's the best place to to go from all right stay safe uh joel and stay free as i say to my awesome. audience Good on you, Tim. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.